Hey, this is uh, your host, Troy Steven Sanders, here with George Alcova, my co-host for the night. George, what's going on, man? Not much, man. You're trying to actually tune a guitar right now. Nice. No, you've got a lot of interesting stories. I don't know which ones you want to start with. You've been around a lot of paranormal stuff all your life, right? Uh, for the most part, yeah, I will say since I was, uh, since I was a little kid. All right, that's what I want to take you back to, because I don't think I ever heard any of those beginning stories of George's paranormal. What was, like, the first thing that happened to you when you were a kid? first thing that happened to me when I was around maybe five or so, I remember being in my room. I looked over to the right side of the room, and I used to be afraid of sleeping in my room, so I would sleep, like, in the corner, like, hiding. I would leave the bed open, you know, whatever. I remember seeing um, a, a man, like, uh, kneeling down on the bed with chains around his arms, and it was like a flash, kind of like a... I don't know, like residual, maybe. I have no idea. It was, uh, it was a slave, basically. How many times did you see this? Only once. But uh, it was very vivid. Like you know, like that really bothered me because I think he was. The message that I got was like he. I think he wanted to know that. How. I, it's kind of hard to remember, but it was more of a. Um, he wanted to know that he was. He wanted someone to know that he was in pain. That's the vibe that I got out of that. And after that, I, I never saw it again. But it was very vivid because I remember it in exact detail. I mean, I can even tell you what he had on and the color of the chains. Yeah, that was actually the first time I ever experienced anything. The cool thing about that was I don't think that was residual. I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I never saw it again. I remember that I told my mom and my grandmother about it, and they just kind of, you know, like, okay, you know, you had a bad dream kind of thing. But, you know, I guess just what every parent tells their kid, you know, when they see things or whatever, you know, there's no such thing as monsters or you were just imagining stuff but like i said man i i remember it very well and it was like it was not like he was there for like you know two or three seconds he was there for you know a little bit of time that i was able to re remember exactly what he had on and you know the color the color of the chains that he had on that they were kind of like silver black you know like worn like worn chains yeah and he had um pants that were ripped you know, like they looked like white, kind of like uh, made out of mesh, kind of like weird. It was like it wasn't like even kind of like dress up fabric. It was like, you know, something that someone picks up because they need to put a pair of pants on kind of thing. And I remember he appeared to be maybe late 30s, late 20s, early 30s, actually. He was he reached up, he put his hands together and lean back and that's when he disappeared yeah I, I think I think that he got his message across to you bro and I think he was like finally somebody realizes it somebody understands well yeah I he I felt that he wanted to be seen and in that that particular area of that was in Puerto Rico by the way Puerto Rico was actually that area where my grandmother's house used to be uh, was very close to the beach and close to the forts and all that stuff and there was, you know, a lot of slave trading in that area, you know, so... That actually makes it, sense. Like, yeah, yeah, because, you know, that's one of the reasons that the Spaniards named it, you know, Rich Port. That's what Puerto Rico means, Rich Port. But unfortunately, it was a massive trade area for slavery that was already at that time, it was already um, illegal to actually to, to do that. But the Spaniards that occupied the island at that time, they were, you know, they were still doing their thing, so... But and I never saw it again. But after that, it was kind of like a door open. Because <laughs> I used to see a lot of a lot of different things after that. So, I, but a lot of can you like maybe embellish on that? <laughs> well, my grandfather is one that I saw a lot after he passed away. So I will see him all the time after he passed. But then when I got older, I realized that I don't think that was him. I think it was something pretending to be him because the times that I witnessed him, I saw him one time when I looked down at the edge of the bed, which I was actually sleeping on the bed, and I looked down and he was kind of like reaching out from the ground up and he was reaching up like asking for help and looking down at the same time and next thing you know he just, it looked like he got pulled down and that was it. Another time I saw him 
in the corner of the room, left side of the room, like, folding, basically. But the times that I saw him, he, he was never... I don't think I don't think it was him. When I got older, I kind of understood that it's like I'm like I don't think that was him. I think it was just something else pretending to be him because my grandmother used to interact with him a lot. Like she will, you know, she didn't talk about it much. But when I got older, she's like, you know, I used to feel his presence, like, you know, climbing into bed, and, and she and she will experience that. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. So that was that was that was uh, that was Puerto Rico, right? That was in Puerto Rico, yeah. And then uh, you moved to New York, I take it? I moved to New York in 1985, I think it was. Yeah, 1985 or so. Definitely a good time for heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, you, can, you can definitely say that. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I know you've got some stories about the Bronx, and you've got some things that, that the one story that you told me, like, is a total nightmare story, dude. That story is also another memory that was very vivid. This freaks me out to this day. This Every one, time you yeah, tell me this, this man. Whole, this, whole, this whole house, this apartment that we lived in, was not good. And when you're a kid growing up, you know, like, I already have experienced paranormal stuff, but I didn't know that's what it was. You know, I don't think it was called that back then. It was just things that I'm like, okay, man, I'm just imagining or, or seeing things. But but this particular place, it, it, something was not right in this place. And my mom, um, my uncle, and one of my uncles and my grandmother, they had a, a friendship with, you know, some people that they got very close to my mom, you know, they were kind of like, not blood related, but they were kind of made family. They hang out together, blah, 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 and all that other stuff. And we're, they're sitting at a table playing cards, you know, and I'm in the living room, you know, just doing my thing because obviously back then we didn't have phones or any of that other crap. And there's this guy sitting across from my grandmother. My grandmother reaches out to him and she grabs his hands and like he won like in a trance, like he couldn't he wasn't moving and then the next thing you know my grandmother starts speaking in and i believe it was a creole it's like haitian it was like a haitian accent okay i don't i, I think it was creole i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe that's what it was and it was you can definitely tell it was someone else it was not her so i remember my uncle getting up going to the room and grabbing a cigar i'm like what the heck's going on and and you know and she told this guy, you're a very bad man. You're you're not a good man. And next thing you know, the guy, you can see him levitating, like the chair levitated with him on it. And he went over this little rail thing that was right next to the dining room. So everyone was sitting at the, the dining room. <laughs> oh, table. my God. Like, it, it was like someone picked him up and threw him over. That's exactly how that looked like. Next thing you know, my, my uh, uncle... One of my uncles, he's holding my grandmother down because she she was like in this rage kind of thing. And it, it wasn't her, man. It, it was absolutely not her. Um, my mom was holding her down. You know, the, the dude basically went over the, the rail. You know, his brother was there. So he went around the corner just to see what was, you know, what was going on. And very freaky. But that, that whole place had such a bad vibe. Like, there was like, it was like a portal of bad shit excuse me that stuff that was not right and unfortunately i happened to have that bedroom as my that was my bedroom where i felt like all that crap came from oh man <laughs> and, and that's because my uncle back then one of my uncles he was into uh santeria which is kind of like the worship of saints it's kind of like a mix of um uh catholic uh religion mixed with voodoo kind of thing that's what santeria really is you know they do animal sacrifices and you know to place saints or whatever but it's like a very weird thing i remember because i have to share my room with him in the corner of the room he had like a little altar with you know saints and candles and then there was this plate at the bottom of the main altar i guess it was that had blood in it and chicken legs cut off and i'm like in alcohol bottles and that was supposed to be an enough an offering thing so yeah that's that's what i kind of grew up with that's insane man <laughs> so that's so that's one that but, and the thing about that santeria is that in spanish uh spanish culture that's a big big thing 
Yeah. That's a really big thing. And, you know, you wear, like, the people that are very devoted to it, they wear all white, and then they have, like, these chain things. Not chains, but, like, necklaces that have different colors, like beads. Yeah. And uh, they represent kind of, like, the level that they're at or whoever they worship or whatever. It's just, like... Wow. It's just, yeah, it's just weird stuff. But, dude, that place was evil. That place had a lot of bad... A lot of bad things in it. I'm just, I'm just keep seeing Grandma using telekinesis to throw the guy over the edge, man. No, dude, that that was just bad energy that picked <laughs> him up, and uh, she, she knew, she knew, and it wasn't her. Whoever it was knew that that guy was bad. Guy was bad because not too long after that, you know, we found out that we went to his place. You know, he had a really nice apartment in the Bronx, that you know, in an area that is not the best thing in the world and his apartment was like immaculate he had like a white carpet and beautiful furniture like a very nice contemporary kind of look not too many things but you know he it was like you know and this is basically a dude that didn't work you know he didn't receive any state help and obviously they were up to no good <laughs> and we found that out later as well but um my grandmother, when we were going up the steps, because there was no elevators in, in, these, in that building, you know, she stops for a second and she is by um, the steps and she pauses and she's like, this is bad. This is bad. There's, she saw a, uh, a spirit of two little girls um, oh, saying, you know, pointing to the door and, you know, and I'm like, what? You know, we're like, great, you know, and then we get there and there's like nothing, you know, whatever. But then not, very short after that, we found out that the dude was arrested for doing very bad things to kids. Well, wow. I he kind of deserved to get tossed over his side, really, man. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's that's one story. And there's I mean, there was other stuff, obviously, when when I lived back home that that son to be as stuff was like you know like a big thing and i will go to these places with you know that people were worshiping you know like saints but it was just like it was just weird it was like a place that you did not want to be at it was just chaotic and when you're that young man it's like i remember that it's like you know, you're you're like a sponge you just kind of pick up on all that crap and and ever since then i've been seeing stuff shadows you know I think, um, yeah, you do, have, you've got a lot of shadow stuff, like, uh, that you tell me about. That's, that's, uh, didn't you just have one of them touch you the other day? Well, the, the three markings on my leg, actually, I was, I'm staring at them right now. They're still there. Yeah, I, that's, that's, that's not, not a good thing. That, that's not, that's not the first time that happened, obviously. I know we talked about that. Before, yeah. But that's not the first time that that happened. So and the thing, and the interesting thing about it is that I told my wife about it because my wife, my wife was not a believer of any of those things, and I did not really talk about it much because you know when you tell people things like that, they're like, "Dude, what meds are you taking?" I mean, some people are yeah, right. talking about it, you know. Yeah. But some of the people, they're like, "Ah, okay, whatever." And she has experienced, she has experienced stuff herself, you know. She has actually seen things herself, um, and we both have seen things together at the same time so um the first experience she had was back home when i went to back home to puerto rico that i haven't been home in 20 years and you know we're sleeping in the room that my grandfather used to have and she said that she felt someone like putting her their hand on her back kind of like the message that she got was she wasn't afraid but it was more of a hey thank you for being here kind of thing that's what she told me because she's like, did you just touch my back? And I'm like, no. And she's like, oh my God, it just, someone just touched my back. But it, she said that it felt like someone was saying, you know, I'm just kind of checking, like, you know, okay, you, you're you good kind of thing, you know, so. And then after that, she, you know, she has seen shadows and other things, especially here where we live. And, and I have experienced that I have seen that I, when, when it starts to annoy me, I do tell it to piss off. <laughs> because sometimes it's just things that, you know, show up, hey, you know, and, and I tell it, I'm like, get out. Not today. I'm busy. Yeah, those you things, know? man. I Every now and then when I've come up there, I don't sleep very well. 
I don't think <laughs> you know why I sleep well, man, because I'm so used to it and they tend to wake me up and it bothers me, so I, I do tell it <laughs> take off. Yeah. I do say that. And, and they leave. Because they know I can feel it. That I, I, I can sense them. They they do leave. And there's other times that they don't like to leave and I get more agitated and I will say things that, you know, you might have to censor, but I'm like, not, you know, I'm like, not now, come on. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've done the same thing. <laughs> it's like, you gotta, you gotta get mean sometimes, man. I'm like, if you're trying to scare me, you're not scaring me. You're kind of really pissing me off right now. Yep, yep. So go find, I'm like, go next door, go bother the guy next door. You know? Man, because there's this thing that for a while it was bouncing in between the buildings here. I, I I knew it. It was just traveling from building to building, and then it will come here, and I'm like, no, I'm like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you, need to, you need to go someplace else. I'm 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 trying to sleep. I'm trying to pull out something, and obviously you want to make your presence now. What do you think now, that? What do you think it is that's bouncing from building to building there? It's just, it's just you know spirits that just go by and, and when some people are receptive you know some people can see them some people can feel them you know so the times that you're sitting there and the back of your hair stands up and you get this cold sensation or you feel like you're not alone that's a radar that everyone has it's some people have not developed that or some people don't understand what it is but that's what that is that is because you're in the presence of something that's gone by or or they want to get your attention. And in most cases, it's just something that's going by. And they, they don't know you're there. Sometimes they don't know you're there. Sometimes they do definitely know you're there. But quite often, it's not like they know you're there. It's like they're just going about their business. And you just happen to, you know, go like, oh, okay. So, but that's what that feeling is. That is exactly what that feeling is. That uh, I, I know that feeling very well. <laughs> when I uh, when I this, you know, kind of losing um, you. Okay, there you are. Uh, when I was visiting you down there, you know, like I stayed in your room, and let me tell you, man, it's like I can usually tell these things, you know, take off, go away. Uh, the, whatever was in your room, and it was not only one thing; it was a few. They oh. did not want to go. It was more like. Wow, the Troy game weight. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> or, you know, like, who is this dude? You know, that's, they don't have to communicate with you. You don't, you know what I mean? They don't have to talk. Yeah. But you, but you feel it. You know, you feel it. And I was very uncomfortable because it was things that wanted me to know they were there, wanted me to be scared. Some were just like, hey, you know, leave the guy alone. It was weird. That whole room is like, that house is is totally possessed, dude. That well, that house, that living room, and I told you this also. Yeah. That living room was like a portal. It was like a door to anything to come true. That's why I did not like that living room. It was like, and it wasn't bad. It was just, you know. <laughs> well, you you called it an airport know, before. You said it was like yeah, an airport. It, it was like, you know, like, we're going to have a flight, you know, we have a late over, so we're just going to hang here for a little bit. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, the, and the whole house was like that. The only area that was safe in the house was the basement. That's because I was in the basement. Then nobody was coming near me. They will try to go down the basement, and it's like, uh, no. Nah. They, they... It, it was, it, it was, but do you know how they made it through, how they made it down to the basement? Through your mother. No, my mom's possessed, dude. Your mom, your mom is like, uh, she's like a walking um, receptor of, you know, like everyone goes like, you ever, you've seen the movie Ghost, right? Do I have not seen well that. Seen it? I have not seen it. Well, the movie Ghost, there's the character of Whoopi Goldberg that, you know, she is uh, a fake medium kind of thing. And it is basically... Um, spirits you know once she develops her talent that she actually has the ability spirits will basically jump on her body so they can experience being alive again or passing messages to people or whatever and i believe her mother was a conductor for stuff like that but not a good one no, but, no. bad things really like her i i will i'm gonna i'm gonna get into that and probably on a different show when i can put those notes together because that place that place, dude, 
was I, we like when I was a kid. For some reason, I got a Ouija board for Christmas. I don't know who thought of it, and I was always able to make it work. And I was I'd have seances and things would work, but I had no idea I needed to close the doors. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, closed yeah. nothing, and nothing. <laughs> it's funny, man. Nothing would go in that basement at all. It was like you go upstairs to go to the bathroom. It's like, oh, come on, man. You go yeah, back downstairs. Yeah, you're like, yeah. all right, I'm good. <laughs> like, like I felt like I slept once we started to hang downstairs, and I think you were just doing that to me just to go like <laughs> experience my hell for a little bit. Once I, I um, <laughs> when I was downstairs, that it was like nothing. It was like a neutral zone. Well, yeah. not even that. It was there was nothing. It was like anything that had to go down there. It was like nope, but on their own. But when your mom came down, it was a completely different thing. Yeah, there's and there's many times I can tell it wasn't her. I did now. Now think about what I told you before. The story about her being possessed, dude. And you yep. you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, that that whole house, you know, th that whole house was um, very interesting. The only place that was semi-safe in the house was the kitchen. For some reason, the kitchen was okay, but any other place, oh, in the TV room when you first walk in, you know, when your dad used to sit to watch TV or whatever. Yeah. That was that was, that was not a bad area. No, that wasn't the original house. That was that was built on. That's probably why. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. So yeah. but that that was that was kind of like his area to like chill out and all that other stuff. So it's my dad's area. He probably didn't. He probably didn't realize that there. He probably didn't realize there were things there, but he was feeling it, and that's why he was always out there. Oh, he knew. Oh, you think? Because, yeah, he knew. He didn't want to talk about it. Really? Yeah, he knew. I, I can't feel that. I can't feel that now. Eh. Uh, it was just kind of like okay, whatever. Like you know, like he knew. He knew. Was, he, just, he just didn't care. Let, let, let's flash back into like, well, I guess we're going to be back in the 90s now, man. You and me, Chinese food, watching intruders, and then fire in the sky. <laughs> and, then, and then fire in the sky, back to back, I think it was. Or no, we, we were watching these movies for like a week straight. All these movies, intruders, communion, fire in the sky, and just like whatever UFO movies we can get. And then... At my place, you explain this best, man. Fall, oh. We fall asleep at my place, and guess what happens, people? George, <laughs> let them know, man, because you, you explain it better to me. These guys are definitely stone or whatever. Um, We're not, dude. Well, the way that that thing happened was that we went to the. Um, we didn't talk about it until the next day. Um, we went to the uh, Thai place to eat some food, and, and you know, and you asked me, you asked me, um, so um, what happened last night? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and then you started telling me things, and I'm like, wait a second, did I did I have a nightmare? Was I sleep talking? Because you were telling me things that I I thought I was streaming enough because we have been watching, you know, movies and, you know, things can definitely influence you, obviously, but when someone else tells you exactly what you experienced without you knowing that you talked to that person, I'm like, wait a second. And, and, and that was an interesting experience because I remember seeing these little dudes in your room and um, I think it was four of them and, um, and I woke up and, and and I believe you, I think it was you, I think you said, you know, go back to sleep, it's all good, you know, and next thing you know, I felt weightlessness and going through the roof of your place, and I'm like, what the heck is this, and, <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, I did not see you in there, but I know, I, I dreamt, I had a dream, or whatever it is, that I wasn't inside a ship, and, or something, I don't know if it was a spaceship or whatever, but going through the roof, that was very vivid because, you know, I remember seeing, like, the beams of the roof, you know, like, the structure of the roof, and I'm like, what the heck? And next thing you know, I'm in this room on this table that was kind of, like, U-shaped, like, long, but it was, like, deep, kind of like, it was, it was weird. And the room walls were circular, like, you know, it was like a room that was circular, and everything was silver. Everything was, like, alloy, 
kind of silver, like a pale silver yeah. color. It and was clean. No color. And clean. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was like a surgical room, but everything was gray. Everything, uh, the floor, the wall, everything was like this thing. And there was a few symbols on the wall. And that was really it. Seeing, experiencing that, but before going through the roof thing, the little dudes, they were very short. And they had the big, you know, the big heads and the big eyes, and they were freaky, dude. They were like, like the size of a, you know, those living dolls or whatever the heck they were called back then. It's like, they were like little tiny things with big heads and big black eyes, and and they talked to me. Their lips had not moved, but, you know, I remember one saying you know it's all right and i remember you looking up saying just go back to sleep do it go past kind of kind of thing you know and and that was really it i never really experienced that i recall anything else like that but the whole the whole story of this is like when we're eating and you're like so what happened last night i remember that very well (laughs) and you're telling me so did i tell you to go back and i'm like we'll go back to sleep and i'm like what the hell? That's like weird. Many, how many did you see in the room? And I'm like, I thought it was either four or five. I know you were levitated. You were basically that they were waking you up, and you were not too happy that they were waking you up. And you're like, dude, just do your thing, but leave my friend alone. I I remember that. And wow. they're like, your friend will be fine, but we cannot leave him here. I I remember that very well. I'm like, okay. And next thing I'm in that room, and next thing you know, I'm back, and I'm like. Oh, wow, that was a freaky dream. That I did not remember at all until when we went to get lunch. Because I remember until you started talking to me, I'm like, wait a second. Was I yet again, was I sleeping? Did I Was, was I sleep talking or whatever? And, 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 you know, that was it. But you you were definitely like, oh, man, really now? <laughs> okay, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, uh, what the hell's going on? I've seen I've seen a lot of weird stuff like like I, I've there's like there's one table that has like a grill in it sort of so you're like covered up in a blanket and when you look like over to your side you can kind of see out of it it's almost like they, I don't know why it's there maybe tools come up through it or something and then you can just see like like you're moving and it's just it's just really weird I mean this is stuff from my past though before that as well. I don't think anything's happened since then. I don't know. I don't recall. But anyway, what do you think? Do you think they actually physically take people? Or do you think it's more like a spiritual, like, abduction? No, I think they... This I don't even know why I'm thinking this right now. I think they have a way to manipulate your physical body and turn it into some kind of whatever, like a spirit kind of thing. Or maybe you go through a dimension or something. No, I think they do take... I think they physically do take you. But yeah. the way they do it is that they can make you go through a wall or, or, or whatever. I don't know. It's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I don't crazy. know how they do it, but it's, it's definitely extremely advanced because they do. They don't take your spirit. They You go. You physically go. Um, and all I, don't, all I remember is just laying on the table. Hey, it, 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 actually, I forgot. I remember the table was very cold. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. But but I don't remember them doing anything to me. I you don't, don't remember. I, no, I don't remember <laughs> them doing anything to me. I don't think they did. I think it was more like, okay, what is this guy here? Well, we got to take him because you know he already knows we're here. That's that's what I took out of that. I was able to walk around the room. I was able to you know like the floor felt very cold. The table was cold. The walls were cold, and I remember seeing the symbols. And I remember even, and I, I wish I had that. Um, I wrote down like a bunch of symbols and letters. Oh, I remember that. Do you remember that? And we took it to that that uh, UFO thing that was like that weekend or something. Like I'm like I have no idea where I came up with that, but it was like all these symbols that represented letters, and that was their language. And that guy had the same thing. Remember, he had the drawings and all? Uh, no, dude, I don't remember much about that. I, I remember going to a convention for, for something, but that that whole thing written down with the letters, that really freaked me out because I know they put that in my head. Do you still have it? No. 
Okay. Now, because I'd love to see that again. I don't remember. Seriously, I don't remember anything about it. But it was like two pages, like two little pages. What are these symbols and what they represent? They're like letters. Like it was translated for us to, you know, like to write words. It's just encoded, like with their language. But I remember the little dudes wearing like a gray, like a gray uh, jumpsuit, and they had like a little black insignia on their chest. Um, they, I couldn't. It was something, but I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, I can't remember it either. I can see but, it a little bit. But, but the suits were definitely like a kind of like a lycra, like a shiny lycra kind of thing. That was that was her outfit. They were cute little guys, man. No, they were not. Cute. <laughs> they were not cute. It was freaky. It was it, it was scary because they all looked the same, and one of them talked in his lips. I guess it was he. We're not moving. It was like in my head I can hear. Yeah, okay, you're... well you're here. We're gonna leave you here, and that's what they told you. Well, it's too bad. You know he's gonna have to go. But I don't believe they did anything. I don't believe they did anything. You, 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 that is the way they communicate, though. I mean, if, yeah, you, like I've been doing. If you like read books and stuff, a lot of people are like they don't. They speak like. It's almost like a way. Have you ever you've talked to a ghost before, where you don't move your lips and they don't move their lips? They show you pictures right. and stuff. That's basically. It's kind of the same thing, man. It's like it's like some kind of. I hate to use the word psychic. It's like some kind of, uh, like, telepathic bond or something. Not telepathic. Is that the word for it? Uh, guess, extra extra I mean, sensory that's, perception. I something. Think that's a, I think that's how they communicate. Yeah. That is. That's that's. that's I, I firmly that's believe I'm that. Saying. That's what I'm saying when it comes to, like, when you asked me a few minutes ago, you know, do you think they they kind of take your soul? Not soul, but I'm like, no, dude. It's like physically they do something to your body that it can turn it into something that you go through walls because that's how they take you. That That's how they take you. And then the, the thing that kills me is that they usually don't put you back where they found you. So what the hell? <laughs> well, no, they had to put us back where they found well, us. They, they took did. us out of they, our beds. Yeah, I know that. They they did. But <laughs> if some of the people that have experienced that, they end up, you know, someplace else or whatever. So, but Imagine but waking up case, naked at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so, anyways. So, yeah, that was, that was definitely interesting. That, that, was, that was a good time, man. All right, man, I think we're going to probably wrap this up, bro. You're, you're going to come back on the show again sometime, right? Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my brother, also co-host whenever the hell he wants to be, George Alcoba. George, right. I thank you very much, man. I was there. There were a lot of good stuff there, man. Uh, yeah, we, uh, obviously we got more stories, you know. Oh, so. we we've got more. We got a lot more. Plus, there's going to be a lot of other people coming on too. And I'm well, going to try to get a three. I'm going to try to get three ways going. If you wanted to be involved in that as well. Uh, is she cute? All right, all right, man. That, on that note, everybody, it's thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I think everybody picked up on that. Okay. <laughs> thank you for listening, everybody. George, thank right. you for being on the show, and I'll talk to you soon. Later, man. You got it. Bye. Am I?